Good morning, good afternoon. Hope you're keeping well. Uh, today, we're gonna do some undervolting on my RTX 4080 graphics card. Uh, I'll explain why it's important and then we'll go through it step by step and we'll compare the results at the end. Um, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. So NVIDIA GPUs have a factory power curve setting, which determines the power and clock speed the GPU runs at. This combined with GPU boost means that your GPU will run faster than what is advertised. However, in order to run faster, your GPU is going to need more power. But the decision on how much power is given to your GPU isn't made for your specific GPU, but rather every single GPU of that model. The problem with this is that we know that there are differences GPU to GPU. If you have an RTX 4080 and I have an RTX 4080 and they are both the exact same model from the exact same manufacturer, that doesn't mean they require the same amount of power. Mine might be stable running at 300 watt, yours might be stable at the same clock speeds running at 280 watt. And that is where undervolting comes into it. Undervolting is taking that extra power back from the GPU to find the sweet spot of power to performance specific to your GPU. Undervolting can have a range of benefits. Less power equals less heat. Less power and heat equals slower degradation. Slower degradation means your GPU may live longer. Combined with less power means you're probably gonna save a few dollars from your power bill. We are ready to do some undervolting. First step is we need a baseline. We need to do a run with complete stock settings so that we know where our starting point is and then any changes that we make are actually making a difference. Are they a positive change? Are they a negative change? Um, there's a couple of factors that go into doing this. So the first thing is we need a way to actually monitor our stats. Now you can see on my screen, I have Cyberpunk 2077 open and I have MSI Afterburner open. You can see here, I've got my on-screen overlay set up. I can see my volts that my graphics card's running at. I can see the wattage my graphics card's running at. I can see my clock speed and I can see my temperature. Now, if you don't have an on-screen overlay set up, don't worry, you can open up MSI Afterburner and just click this little monitoring button here. It'll retain, I think it's the last 20 minutes, 20 minutes of data. So you can run three benchmarks back to back and just capture it in here and you will know, oh, okay, my GPU was pulling this much power, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I need to, because this is gonna be a baseline, I just wanna make sure that I don't have any profiles applied. So I'll click this little reset button here and just to be doubly sure that I'm running out of box settings. Now I'll go into Cyberpunk and we'll click on settings. We'll go to video and we will click the run benchmark button. Now I'm not gonna do this and let it play all the way through, but I just wanna quickly show you guys what happens to my GPU. You can see that my volts are 1.075. My watts are at about you know 250, it'll spike around my clock speed and my temperature. Now I'm gonna run this three times through. I will average out the results and then I'll stick them up on the screen. Alrighty, so that part's done. We have the baseline now. We have to start testing the power tweaking. So to do this, jump back into MSI Afterburner and click on the Curve Editor button. And on the left-hand side, you'll get all your clock speeds. Along the bottom, you'll have all of your voltages. And you can see already there's a gray line where it intersects is where you are currently running. And if I highlight that node, you can see down the bottom, it's highlighted the voltage at 1070 volts. And on the left, we've got 2805 megahertz. And if you look in Cyberpunk, I have 2805 megahertz on the GPU, I have 100 watt of power, and I'm at 1.070 volts. So we know, yep, that's exactly where we are. So next, we're going to undervolt. Now, let's decide on the target. So for the sake of this video, as an example, I'm not gonna do anything crazy because I don't wanna, I don't wanna break the recording. I'm gonna go to uh, 1.025 volts, which is a 0 0.050 reduction. And you can see that when I highlight the node on the left-hand side, it says 2730 megahertz because this point already exists in my power curve. So I already know that that is gonna be stable. You actually don't need to test anything there. I could just apply that at that point. 
So how would I apply it at that point if I wanted to? Well, you have a couple of different ways. If you know that you just wanted to do that as a test and you weren't actually going to save it, you can press L on your keyboard with the node highlighted and you'll see a yellow, um, a yellow line pop up. That yellow line, it's just telling it, it locks it to that node. It basically says you can't dynamically adjust your voltage or clock speed. You will run at this voltage at this clock speed. You may wonder why this is actually just used for testing. It's if you just wanted to test something to see if it's stable and you can't be bothered creating a profile and actually applying it to a profile. But we don't want to do that. We are actually looking at creating a profile here. So I'm going to disregard that for now. Let's just press L to get rid of that. What we do want to do though, is we want to look at the 1025 and the 2730 volts. And we want it to not go higher than that as an actual profile permanently. So I'm going to hold down control on my keyboard and I'm going to click a node and drag it. And you can see my entire power profile changes as I drag this with control held down. Now 2730 megahertz was our target clock speed under that voltage. So for the sake of testing, we're just going to drag this so that the apex of this curve is lower than 2730 megahertz. So I can leave it there. Now we're going to re-highlight the 1025 volts node and we're going to press the up arrow key and put this back to 2730. Now you may ask why we are doing this and the reason is because whilst we can use that option where you press L and bring up the yellow line because it never dynamically changes, what happens when you're not playing a game? Is it still going to be locked at that essentially just wasting power? So what we're going to do now is we're going to tweak the curve and say that this is the highest point. So now I'm going to hit the green, uh, the tick in MSI afterburner here and look at that. You can see my curve is now flattened out and the highest point of my curve is at 1025 volts at 2730 megahertz. So we've hit apply. And since I've hit apply in Cyberpunk over here, you can see it's now 1.025 volts and it's 2730 megahertz. And my power has come down from 100 watt to about 90 watt. So it applies in real time. Now that is there, that is done, great. The last little bit is I'll save this to a profile. So we're just gonna click the save icon here in MSI's window and we're going to then right click three and it'll save it just to three for me as a, a new profile. So I can now fast swap between each one. Alrighty, so that is an undervolt that has been applied. Now, I'm not finished just yet, but I will stop here. I'm gonna rerun the three benchmarks with this new undervolt just so we have something to compare against the base. And then in the last section, we're gonna go ahead and I wouldn't call it an overclock because you're really just moving back to your base clock speed. But basically we wanted to see if we can get 1025 volts, but keep it at the uh, 2800 megahertz. Alrighty, so effectively we have dropped our power consumption by about 20 watts. We have dropped our GPU temperature by about three degrees and we have lost zero performance, zero percent performance. So <clears throat> let's just take it a little bit further because right now I know that the GPU is running at a lower clock speed. Now, what we wanna try and do is see, can we run at 1.025 volts, but at the original 2820 megahertz, just to eliminate any performance loss. To do this, we're gonna jump back into the curve editor. I'm gonna grab my node here, that 1025 one that's at 2730 megahertz. And we're just gonna hit the up arrow key and go all the way back to 2820. And then we're gonna hit the little tick button. And in Cyberpunk, you can see it updates to 2820 megahertz, 90 watt at 1.025 volts. So now I'm gonna, for the third time, rerun the testing and we'll take a look into what's actually happened from a performance perspective and if it is stable or not. Alrighty, so I'm sure you guys can see from the numbers, but we've effectively been successful, which is great. I was really hoping we would be. Um, so we're about 20 watts less, less temperature usage, and we're running at the same clock speed. 
that's awesome across the board. Um, you will notice that technically there's more frames and you may ask, well, how come you can be using less power but get more performance? There are factors to that. It's a combination of GPU boost where because I'm using less power, my graphics card temperature is lower, which means that it can maintain certain increments in the power chart for a longer period of time. So it may actually maintain a higher clock speed technically for an extended period versus if I had that extra power. Then there's also just an efficiency reason. If you give too much power to something that doesn't need that much power, it still is using the power and it just has to get rid of it. It becomes inefficient. So effectively doing this, you're making your GPU more efficient by going through and finding that, well, fine tuning it, I guess you could say. Look, it's it's safe and it's fun. Undervolting is not gonna break your graphics card. Um, you just get free performance in most cases, lower temperatures, um, lower power usage. There's just a big long list of positives. You know, the degradation I mentioned at the start is another factor. Um, it is safe, you're not gonna break your GPU. You know, you might panic because your game freezes or you get artifacting in it or your you know, your graphics card just freezes. There are signs that you're not stable. It doesn't mean your graphics card is breaking. It's just that you need to give it a little bit more power or maybe you need to block uh, back your clock speed off. But you're not gonna break anything. So just take a deep breath, reboot your computer, try again. You know, it's, it's safe and it's fun. All right, well, that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching if you made it this far. Um, look, give it a try if you haven't never done it before. Um, you know, it's fun safe it's really you got nothing to lose um let me know if you have any questions below very active in my comments so yeah till next time see ya